cost the damn water, and it's not going to make, I'm going to handle that myself. And if I'm here to elect it, uh, these delegates are not going to hurt us or hurt me or hurt Georgia or hurt Mississippi. Uh, the Freedom Party is not being seated. What's happening is we're doing four or five things. Number one, we're coming in there and seating the state of Mississippi. Every damn one of them. Now, they oughtn't to be, Carl. They oughtn't to, we can't, you and I just can't survive uh, our political modern life with these goddamn fellas down there that, that are eating them for breakfast every morning. They got to quit that, and they got to let them vote, and they got to let them shave, and they got to, got to let them uh, uh, eat and things like that. And they don't do it. And where, however much we love Jim Eastland and John Stennis, they get a governor like Ross Barnett, and he, he's messing around there with Wallace, and he won't let one man go in a precinct convention. Now, that's, we've got to put a stop to that, because that's just like the old days where I got when, they, when uh, uh, they wouldn't let them go in and cast a vote of any kind. And you've put a stop to it in your state. But we're going to ignore that. We're going to say, hell yes, you did it. You're wrong. You violated the 57 law, and you violated the 60 law, and you violated the 64 law. But we're going to seat you, every damn one of you. You lily white babies, we're going to salute you. My, my suggestion would be don't seat Mississippi or the two delegates of that, either one of them, unless the Mississippi regular delegation will give you assurance that if they're seated with these other two, they won't walk out. Well, you, you go over, you go over, they think, we think, I don't know, I'm not there, and I haven't taken anybody else's calls. I don't want you to let anybody know that I even talked there, because I'm doing my best to avoid it, and uh, I, I'm turning them down. I don't want, to, don't want them to say that I'm calling in there, but they tell me that uh, these folks that will take the oath, come in there, that there'll be over half of them from Mississippi do it. Now, I don't know whether they will or not. I haven't talked to them, but I thought that maybe you and John could sit down and talk to them and say to them that they're going to, they win their fight. Number one, they've been challenged. They got no credentials. They haven't been seated. Credentials committee comes out there at night and said, number one, we seat the state of Mississippi and everybody takes the oath. That's number one. Number two, we're going to pass a resolution, take care of this thing in the future. And number three, uh, uh, we're going to say that two people, uh, uh, symbolic here, can be taken as, as general delegates, uh, having nothing to do with Mississippi, depriving Mississippi of nothing, and try to put an end to this thing. Now, why don't you do this if you're going to do that? Why don't you? you? You still got a little problem about oath down in uh, Alabama. Everybody's been now saying, well, hell, you're making me sign one, and you ain't making no uh, uh, Why don't you let John Bailey or somebody... If, if you get an agreement with the Mississippi records to the bill stick, then let Bailey or somebody just let the whole goddamn convention rise at one time and say, I want everybody to repeat after me, I'm a Democrat, I'm going to support the nominees and work for the Democratic Party in November. And everybody stand and repeat it in unison and have the whole damn hold in, and everybody does it, and that's the damn thing. That would suit me fine. I would love to do it. Anything I can do to get harm in him, friend, I sure do want to do it, because I've... Off the whole thing and that would wind up the old uh, you and John, you get a John, and you all suggest that. Both of you are young and modern and effective, and I'm a poor man here that's got a government falling on me in Vietnam today. I just walked out of the Security Council. I've got McNamara coming in here at 6 o'clock tonight and bringing General Taylor back. I've got Cyprus in a hell of a war. And uh, uh, I can't uh, I can't go up there and tell those damn fellas and argue with Adam Clayton Powell and, and Martin Luther King and uh, uh, the fellow from Alabama, uh, Bull Connor. Uh, they they ought to try to make it as easy on them as they can because they've all been in these things in their own state conventions. They got problems. They're going to have them. Now this doesn't hurt anybody. And I'm for everybody taking the oath. All, nobody claims they won't do it except Mississippi and Alabama. Now they say they'll do it. They just don't want to be single out in right. Well, just tell them every national commitment's taken it from every state, speaking for his state. Well, I agree with you. Every, every one of them have already done it, but I don't object. I'd come up there myself, walk out naked and take it if it would ease Bull Connor's pressure any. Uh, but do you and John uh, get together and try to talk to this, uh, this group and... Uh, uh, well, it's just going to take us 10 minutes to get this thing through, and these men never participate in anything, never vote in anything, never have any voice. Hell, I'd give them 20 votes to rather than cost me $2 million on this television like they've done the last two days. I'd give them anything, just like you say. I, think, I don't think they're doing, but, doing easy anyway. But you see what they're doing tonight. I've got a list of his calls. He, he's going to speak at the California delegation. He's going to speak at the Washington delegation. He's trying to speak at the Kentucky delegation. 
And each day he's just adding to it and causing us trouble. He's getting on the television saying that our God is threatening us, that he's not going to stand up and vote for us. Now we got a poll coming out tomorrow. What does the poll show? Just can get out of that convention and hold it. Uh, Johnson's political stock up since stand on Vietnam. For a release not earlier than Wednesday, August 26th. Public support for way U.S. handling situation has shot up. One important reason for Johnson's improved position of political race is stand on Vietnam. And he goes ahead and writes all about it and quotes everybody and uh, so forth. Then it takes them. Uh, NBC is releasing a poll tonight, Roper's new figures, minority, Negro 97 percent, Jewish 86, Catholic 73, Union people 76, women 68. Uh, these figures beat anything ever in the history, including FDR. Well, if you don't have a bunch of these leaders going on television who his heroes telling him that uh, uh, he can sit it out, that's what he's telling him yesterday. I know that, I know that, but I, 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 I'm not throwing Mississippi out. I'm giving them every damn vote they got, every single one. Mr. President, yeah. John will speak to you. Thank you for letting me okay. go. Right. Thank you, sir. You help John, won't you? I will. All right. Hi, uh, Johnny. How are you, sir? <laughs> oh, doing the best. Well, uh, Carl is pretty well giving you uh, his reaction on the conspiracies. Uh, as you know, to some extent, it's mine. Uh, or, uh, uh, fortunately, it's Don Russell from South Carolina. It's Alberta Harrison from Virginia. They just left here a few minutes ago. And Harris and Carl and I said, you're talking. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the hell's going to happen. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough problem. I don't know what legal uh, really justification they're going to have for this move. Uh, if Mississippi, if George Wallace didn't come up here and lead out to uh, Alabama, and if Mississippi doesn't join them, uh, I think everybody will stay at the convention, although I think uh, Don Russell particularly said he's the East Boy, he's going to support you. Uh, Alberta Harrison said the same thing. He said, I'm part of the bird machine. Uh, John, I'll take any form they got. I didn't raise this one. They raised it. They told me, Walter called me and told me that everybody had taught in there, you all's leaders this morning, that it'd work out. Now, I'll take anything that any of them work out anywhere to keep from showing her ass. I just, uh, nigger, 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 and I've got so much of it that I wrote out a statement this morning uh, that, that would have uh, solved it. But, uh, I just, uh, I'm just harassed to death, and I don't know about Donald Russell and, and uh, 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 Harrison, and I don't just don't know how to get them. I told uh, Walter this morning, I said, get John in with that group and see that they try to reach some agreement on something. Well, they tell me they did. I said, okay, now Rouse raised my hell, and he's not going to take it. It means nothing. It doesn't, it's Mississippi seated. She gets every damn vote she's entitled to. She oughtn't to be seated. She wouldn't let those niggers vote, and that's not right. But she's been seated, got every single one of her delegates seated, and now she says, well, I'm going to be a goddamn dog in the manger. The rest of the convention can't even have two other people in here. Now, we uh, we do that all the time. You come up here, and I seat you, and say, John, you come over here and stay with me. And you say, yeah, that's all right, but I ain't going to let you have coffee with another fella. And that's not right. Those people were refused admission. They were qualified. They're entitled to go. So we say, we won't take them off of Mississippi. Mississippi's got her rights. She wins her case. Her people are seated. Uh, but if it won't work, it won't work. We'll just have to, to try something else. I, to me, it's a lot less objectionable than calling a roll and uh, on this other thing. And I, I, uh, I just hate to 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 uh, be offensive to to uh, uh, divide the party. And they told me last night it'd be 1,100 and 900. And I looked at it, and I, uh, we got a good many 1100s that are not going to be with us, I can tell you that. I just know they're not going to be there when it sticks. And it looks like, to me, this doesn't cost anybody anything. I just, I just to be honest with you, I, I just can't understand it. 1100 to 900 is too close to go to the floor with it. Yes, it is, and they, I don't know why the... I don't know why the South would want to be associated with Mississippi in a deal like this. It won't let a man come vote. Got two federal laws on the subject and a few statements. I can't understand them. We're seating them. We're giving them their seats. Every damn vote. There's going to be no vote anyway. 
All we're doing is taking Ullman from Oregon off of this 13 minority group and getting him to take two or three more off so they can't get a minority report. Now that's all. And we're bribing them with our money. It doesn't, not with their money. They keep every damn thing they got. So I don't know why they care. Let me ask you something else on a completely different subject. I talked to Bob Anderson. He thinks, and I think, uh, that John Lowe would be an excellent man to head up the citizen group in New York. I understand there are two objections. First, he's a Wall Street banker. Uh, no, I'll tell you what, John. He's, I've talked to Bob Anderson, I guess, 45 times, no. minimum. And John Loeb, I've called him all Sunday, and I've talked to him twice. And they have together got about nine names. They, they just have never got off of that ground. I've sent Jim Rowe up there. I've sent Tommy Corcoran up there. I've sent everybody could up there. And finally, couldn't get anything else done. I called Secretary Treasury over here and said, by God, I want you to get after him. Go get Sidney Weinberg and get him in here. As soon as he did, John Loeb got up, and they got to fighting about which one was going to do what. I told Bob Anderson. Please get all the folks in one room and let them elect the man they want. Well, because the two Jews don't get along. John Loeb wants it, but he won't do anything. So our people very honestly say that they're afraid Bob's playing this like he did Walter's race, kind of both sides. He's talking to Humphrey and talking to Eisenhower every day, but he doesn't want to get on the committee himself and get out in front because he can do more in the background. But when you go to adding the people, he got nine from over the United States and in two months now. First, he couldn't do it on account of Bobby Kennedy. Then he couldn't do it because of some other reason. Well, no, I, can't. I don't want to argue with it. I, he didn't want me to call John Loeb, but I wasn't going to call John Loeb. I, told I called John Loeb and talked to him last Sunday and then called him after he got off his yacht and called him back there, told him to get with Sidney Lineberg, John, uh, Bob Anderson, the whole outfit, all of them get in a room up there and elect whoever they want and get an executive secretary. When they get through, they're going to have about 21 members and probably 21 votes if they go vote, and then they raise a hundred so thousand dollars. But uh, uh, Bob Anderson calls here every day, and the first paragraph is call John Loeb, and the next paragraph is how about this appointment, that one. And uh, I've about come to the conclusion that uh, Bob uh, uh, doesn't can't put those folks together. If he does, he can't put many of them because he's been there now for all this time since uh, since uh, before San Francisco, and he hadn't got it organized yet. And John Loeb was always going to be the ringleader and call him in, but he didn't get anybody. He's going to get Arthur Fleming in Oregon and stuff like that, but he never does get him. What I wish you'd do, Carl said that he would go and help you now, and I think that you all might be able, uh, I don't know Ralph may beat us. We've got to be careful not to bring it out if he does, but uh, 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 you all may be able to get to South to understand it. Here's the first question. Is Mississippi Freedom Delegation seated or Mississippi Delegation seated? Number one, Mississippi regulars are seated. That's number one, with every damn vote they got. Number two, we pass a resolution, say it uh, uh, takes care of the future. We're going to use uh, uh, this as a criteria in the future. Uh, uh, you can't discriminate against people. That's down the road four years. That doesn't hurt anybody. You all don't do discriminate now. Georgia doesn't discriminate now. Number three, you take the oath, take the pledge, support the nominee. Not anything wrong with that. And number four, that's all. So we'll get rid of Mississippi, and then we'll go on and talk about something else for five minutes. Then we'll bring up another resolution that because of the protests on housing, on education, on transportation, the Democratic Party has always been a party where you could lodge a protest. We'll r recognize these two people as symbols here. And there'll, there'll be no votes, we'll call no roll, but we'll just stop the fighting and stop the roll call. Now, the primary thing is to get Ullman off of it, because he's one of 13, he takes two more, and they can't get a minority report, so you don't divide the convention, 1100 and 900. And if we should be on the short end of the stick, and the Negroes ran the white folks out, it'd be a hell of a lot worse than two men sitting over there in the corner. Now, Rouse down protesting it now. He, he won't take it, and he's going to come out there and try to. But if we can, while the iron's hot, without losing the South, we're going to lose the South, we'll try to get some other formula, and you all work it out. But Walter was of the opinion that uh, that uh, this didn't hurt them, and that uh, you thought they'd go along. I think that's right. Well, you, you work on it, and if there's anybody else I can do, don't quote me. Don't say you talk to me. Don't let them know what I'm doing, if you can avoid it, because this is the only call I've taken, and I don't want to... And 
you do anything in the world you can and let me know all right